Joining us now to talk about President Biden's historic decision to step aside and pass the torch to Vice President Harris, please welcome the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Yes. Yes. So everybody's been reacting to the news that uh, the president is stepping aside and, you know, going over it and talking about it. My question is, okay, what do we do now? Yes. How do we make this work? What can these folks who are sitting out here do to ensure that she is the nominee? Well, what a day this is, <laughs> right? Because yeah. now we have our marching orders. Yeah. We have a nominee. Her name is Kamala Harris. She is going to be the next president of the United States. Mm -hmm. But to make that happen, we're all going to have to do that work. We're going to have to go out. We're going to beat back all the naysayers that are already coming up with all the reasons why, you know, this is going to be hard. Sure, it's going to be hard. It's a presidential election. Mm -hmm. And that means we need everybody to be mobilizing in their community communities, organizing in their communities, yeah. making sure that they are coming out with the real accomplishments of Vice President Harris, because she is remarkably accomplished, mm -hmm. both before she became vice president, mm -hmm. but she has been a partner in the Biden-Harris administration. Mm -hmm. She is part of why we got so much done in the last four years, and she has the agenda for the next four years. It's already started to be unveiled by President Biden. That's her agenda as well. She's gonna put her own stamp on it, but what she needs is our faith in her yeah. and our willingness to fight back for her as we hear all of what we know are gonna be a lot of misogynistic, mm -hmm. you know, sexist, racist attacks on her. We gotta be ready. So, are you all ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Congresswoman, you had been standing firm. You were very loyal to President Biden. You worked with him on some very important yes. legislation. And even after he dropped out yesterday, you said he was the most progressive and effective president on domestic and economic policy in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. How do you think history will remember Joe Biden? That's how I think history will remember him. Mm -hmm. He is a remarkable human being. I also said in my statement yesterday that he's never forgotten where he where came, came from. from. That's mm -hmm. right. And he never forgot that he was going to have people's backs, working people, poor people. So it isn't just the list of incredible accomplishments yeah. of, you know, getting infrastructure done, taking on climate change, bringing unemployment down to the lowest levels. It is also the fact that he changed the way government functions mm -hmm. so that we can stand up for working people across this country, people who had kind of forgotten that that's actually our role in government, mm -hmm. is to stand up and make sure that everyone, no matter where you are, no matter how much you earn, that you have the opportunity to make a life for yourself that is decent. And Joe Biden is a deeply decent man. Oh, yeah. And he fought hard for a vision of America that, in my view, really is the most progressive um, vision that we have seen from, from an American president in my lifetime, but also was incredibly effective at saving our country in 2020 from Donald Trump, saving our country from COVID. Remember the, mm -hmm. the horrific millions of people who were dying at that time, mm -hmm. the lack of hope, the despair that we all felt. Mm -hmm. And when he came in, we had a steady hand. And when he came in with Vice President Kamala Harris, we had a steady hand at the till. We had somebody that was going to be out there and really fight for us. And so, you know, I'm just honored to have worked with him. I think mm -hmm. he is a remarkable president. Um, he made this decision to step down, and uh, that is a selfless decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and he made the decision to endorse Vice President Harris, who is the only person that tens of millions of people have already voted for right. as vice president. Yeah. So uh, this is the people's decision in many ways. Of course, we're going to see it again with the state parties as they continue to, the delegates continue to endorse her. But um, 
you know, I think uh, the president is, has done so much for our country. We owe him a deep debt of gratitude. We sure yeah. do. I agree. Um, well, you came out immediately to give your endorsement to Vice President Harris as the Democratic nominee. And my understanding is that you were one of the Democratic Party leaders uh, that the Vice President called yesterday yes. to speak about, uh, to speak with about her candidacy. Now, I know you can't tell us much yeah. about that conversation, but can you tell us about her mood and, and, and what was the tone of the conversation? Well, she's ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's ready. She's ready to win this for us in November. Um, she's serious. She knows it's a big... Uh, fight before us. She knows that she has to work to put together the coalition that Joe Biden put together in 2020 to win. We need every voter. Mm -hmm. You know, we need the Nikki Haley voters, but let me be clear, we need progressive voters. We need our base. We need black folks. We need brown folks. We need young people. Yeah. We need our entire progressive coalition because women. that's where yeah. we need women because that is where the energy is going to come from and that's uh, where the volunteers are going to come from. So I think she is she is absolutely ready. I've had a, um, a long history with her. Mm -hmm. uh, when she was in the Senate, we were elected on the same night yeah. as, as Donald Trump was. And we worked together to introduce some great legislation called Access to Counsel after mm -hmm. Trump instituted the Muslim ban. Mm -hmm. um, she was my lead sponsor on the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights yeah. um, and taking care of the care economy, making mm -hmm. sure we have universal child care, making sure that we have long-term care for our seniors, making sure that we get paid leave yeah. for women yeah. and men across <laughs> this country. Um, that is really, we've worked together on a lot of those issues. So I'm really looking forward to her just being able to show her smarts, um, mm -hmm. show her uh, ability to prosecute the case, as you've said, uh -huh. you know, uh, a prosecutor and a convicted felon. Yeah. Those are our I, two choices. I like that matchup. <laughs> well, Congresswoman, I want to ask you about the Veep stakes, because with this narrow runway of three months and yeah. a week to the election, I think they can really matter. And there's been a lot of push for her to pick a moderate as her running mate, an Andy Bashir of Kentucky, a Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, maybe a Mark Kelly of Arizona as the chair of the Progressive Caucus. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think she needs to have somebody who can appeal to, um, you know, a, a wide swath of people, as she does. Um, and so I think that's going to be important. I have the, the thing about this is she has been vice president for four years. Mm -hmm. So she knows exactly what that job is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think she knows what she needs yeah. in that position. Mm. So I have full faith and confidence that she'll, she'll pick somebody good. Um, I do think the working class agenda... Yeah is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Biden put that agenda together in 2020. He's been fighting for it. We need to make sure that we are appealing to folks across this country who want to make sure that they just have one job, right? Not two and three jobs to right. take care of their families. Yeah. Yeah. That we're going to expand Social Security and Medicare, um, take care of our seniors, that we're going to make sure that we provide that universal child care. Those are the things that are really going to draw people in. So the, the candidate is obviously important for vice president, but really it's the agenda, the yeah. vision. Uh. How are we going to bring every single voter into this so that they feel differently about their lives with the agenda that we're laying out. And that's why the Progressive Caucus has a proposition agenda, by the way. <laughs> we are all set, yeah. and much of it is on the biden here. Well, I want to ask you this. There have been calls on the right, including from Speaker Johnson and Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance, for President Biden to resign immediately. They say if he's unfit to run for four months from now, he's unfit to lead until then. So is there any merit to that? And do you expect those calls to gain steam? It is so ridiculous. Listen, <laughs> they should be calling on their nominee, a convicted felon, a rambling, incoherent Racist. guy who wants to be a dictator on day one. Yeah. Yeah. They, they should be calling on they him to... They should call on yeah, him to not. step down. Well, and every pundit out there who has been hounding us for the last three weeks about Joe Biden, they mm -hmm. should be hounding every That's Republican right. to call on Donald right. Trump to step down. That part, part, that part, that yes. part. I think they just figured out what it means. Because, you see, if the president now has immunity from everything, mm -hmm. they're nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're nervous because yeah. they don't know what Joe's going to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Our thanks to Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Come back anytime. You have a seat at this table. Come and talk to us. Let us know what's going on.